the Holy Spirit in you and learning to know him and flow with him has got to be our focus this time. How many know that if the Holy Ghost is not your best friend, you're going to have a tough time through this period of time in our life, through this season, through what's going on. And so what we've got to be able to do is to know him and make him known. Now, what's that like? What's that about? And so right now, everything that can be is trying to get your attention. I'm going to show you some examples here. Have you ever seen a crowd and the noise it can make? How many know the Chiefs goes for the number one loudest you know, place there? So we, we see all these people, all this crowd noise. But have you ever, in the middle of a crowd, have you ever been able to hear a different sound or one person talking? or a bird making noise, or a dog barking. It was like in the middle of all that the crowd noise, you could hear a voice of one baby crying up there in front of you. And it was like all the crowd got put aside for that focus on that one. How many of you have ever been able to do that? You know what I'm talking about here. It was like somehow you were able to put the crowd out for a minute and focus on that one. Uh, it was like you never heard that one voice and then all, all you could hear was background noise and all of a sudden that changed, the background noise went away. Or have you ever looked at a chain link fence like this guy? You see the chain link fence. And how many have seen the pictures of a guy with one of those high powered lens and he's able to adjust that lens and it's like the fence isn't even there. He's able to pick up, let's say like a rabbit and, and the fence is still there, but it focuses it out. It gets on it. How many know that that can happen with us? We can choose to be stopped by the chain link fence or the so-called boundaries, or we can get God's vision, the God vision, and look right through that and see what he's showing us. And right now, that's what's going on in this hour. Are you going to let the peripheral, all the noise, go aside, and are you going to move ahead and see what God's calling you to see? And number one is... Turn my eyes upon Jesus. See, I, I've got to make him the sole focus right now in this hour. So another little thing. We have the ability to look unto Jesus even in the middle of a storm. God's put on you in the inside. How is Jesus through a middle of, they called it a gale force wind. It could have been like a little... Uh, hurricane, whatever it was, but when Jesus was on the boat crossing to the other side, these guys were freaking out, they were sinking, and how was Jesus able to rest through that? See, see I, I'm saying to you is, we don't have to freak out from the storm. We can rest in the middle of the storm. Can somebody say amen with me? Because we let the storm get our focus. We let who's speaking the loudest. We let the latest thing that the enemy side is trying to do get our focus and ruin, try to ruin our day. And, and how many know God's not freaking out? So I'm with God, so I'm not going to freak out. I had a friend that was a, he's a big elk hunter. He's a hunter, he's a fisherman. And he was telling us at our men's conference, he said, I get to go on another elk hunt. And he was telling me about previous elk hunts. And he had this small a uh, little set of binoculars, and he was looking and scoping and couldn't really see anything. And then there was his friend who had on a high-powered set of binoculars, really nice, scoping in. And he says, can you see him? And he says, no. And what he thought was a big rock laying there, he got these high-powered binoculars, and it was an elk just sitting there. And then as he focused them in more, there was a whole bunch of elk. I mean, way far away. So how many know we need to change binoculars. We need to change what we're using that we're looking through and get God's prism, God's filter of seeing things. How many have ever seen as a kid a lion tamer? You know, he, he'd take that whip and crack it, and he'd have that, that chair, and that chair had four legs. And I used to think, well, you know, that's just to kind of protect him, or, you know, that lion's not going to get him anyway, whatever. But the whole purpose of the four-legged chair was to distract the lion. As long as the lion looked at those four legs on that chair and kept hearing this whip, he wasn't focused on the man. 
How many know that we don't need to be distracted by what the enemy's doing? We need to focus on the man, Jesus. Come on. Yesterday, my uh, grandson, he, he just started his first football game. You know, he's in the seventh grade, so I went to watch it. And I noticed, you know, he was, he was on the defensive line and trying to bust through there to get that quarterback, you know, and he's a tough kid. But there was this one kid that kept blocking him and staying right in front of him. And I'm like, I'm thinking, well, can you just knock him out of your way? And it was almost, he said, but that kid was cussing at me. I mean, no kids that age, you know, there's a little conversation going on on the line. And, you know, and he said, but he's cussing at me. So he was letting this kid be the distraction instead of the guy with the football. And so we have to be real careful at this time. There are people that are influenced by the spirit of this world. They're going to be cussing at you. They're going to be saying, where's your mask? And want to fight you. And I can't let myself be distracted by these people. I've got to get my focus on the prize. Are you with me? Instead of this guy that's cussing at me and keeping me, I've got to look at the guy's ball and just get this guy out of my way. Are you with me here? If you're not relying on the Holy Spirit daily, you're going to have trouble. It's not an option in this hour and this day. Holy Ghost, what are we going to do today from the moment I get up until I go to bed? We need to be hearing and training people with getting in tune with his voice daily. God's going to be telling you to do things. I don't know if I shared this with this group of people or not, but I was sitting, uh, we were down in North Carolina visiting the baby a couple weeks ago, so if I told you, you can hear it again. And he's got a company he started a few years ago with another vet selling beard oil. And I'd have thought, who's going to buy beard oil? Well, they've actually done very well. And so he's shown us this big screen in his room, and he's showing us every time you hear a ping, that's somebody just bought a, one of his products. So you hear ping, ping. A guy in West Germany bought some. You know, it's going like that. And he's showing me how much they've made up to this point. And they were getting close, somewhere close to the million-dollar mark. He says, yeah, we don't know exactly when it's going to be, but we're going to hit that million-dollar mark. So Denise and I go down, and we sit on the beach, and I get this thought, call him and congratulate him now. Now, when you get a thought you weren't thinking, and it's not something weird or fearful, right? Does it hurt to act on it? So I text and I said, hey, congratulations on hit the million dollar mark. Almost immediately I get a text back and it says, how did you know to send that right then? Who told you? And, and so we call, we get on the phone together and his partner's there and they had just broken the million dollar sales mark and then my text comes in right after that. Come on. And, and so his partner's kind of shaking and dancing, and Denise, he's going, how did you do that? Did somebody tell you? I said, no. And Denise said, what did you say, Holy Ghost? And Johnny goes, Holy Ghost. It was Holy Ghost. <laughs> and my point is, that, that encouraged them to know God is listening. God is helping. God is paying attention. And so you and I need to be listening to that still, small voice and not be distracted by the, what, what do they call that chatter that's going on? Come on now. No more chatter. No more room noise. Holy Ghost, let's focus in. Because God is going to win in the election. You with me? The enemy is going to be exposed. But I can't get caught up in all the stuff. I mean, I was a wrestler. I was a fighter, man. It's like, come on. You want some of this, man? Let's do this. You know, I, I can't get in that fleshly realm in this hour. This is an hour for where the Spirit's got to be operating and going. The Holy Spirit will provide... Equip, minister to every need. Your part is to rest and receive his supply. What's your part? That means I can't be in make it happen mode. How many are one of those guys that know how to get things done? I can get things done. I can make things happen and run over people in the way. No, my job is to rest and receive because the spirit is trying to provide my every need. I got to win the battle over sin consciousness. You know, most of the church lives in sin consciousness. Sin consciousness versus righteous 
consciousness as it talks in Hebrews 10.2. For then would not sacrifice be cease to be offered, for the worshipers once purged should have no more consciousness of sin. And he's bringing in, here we are in Hebrews, talking to the Hebrews believers, and they're still, Jesus hadn't come back. I mean, it hadn't been that long. Jesus hadn't come back, so they're ready to go back to the Old Testament sacrifices. And he said, no, no. you got to, one sacrifice has been made, it's the man, Christ Jesus, and that is our focus. That's where we're going now. We're not going back to the Old Testament way of, I sinned, I've got a sacrifice. I sinned, Jesus became my sin. He became the ultimate sacrifice. Now it's my job to be righteous conscious and not sin conscious. And if you're going to move ahead in this world, you're going to have to see yourself when you wake up as I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Even when I make a mistake, I can run to God and say, God, I need help. I need your view, your opinion here where I keep stumbling. Somebody say amen or oh me. So I want, I want you to get that because God is doing things right now. Who has made us sufficient to be ministers of the new covenant? Who's been made sufficient? Come on, Bill's got it. Anybody else? Anybody else? Oh, you've been made sufficient to be ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter of the, but by the Spirit. For the letter does what? But the Spirit gives life. How many want to keep working by the letter of the law, your ability to try to keep all the scriptures, or you want to work by being led of the Spirit, so when he tells you to call somebody, you'll call them? The law regarded as ministry of death because it condemns sin in the flesh. And the wages of sin is death. Uh, it is only through the ministry of grace that we live. Say that with me. It's only through the ministry of grace that we live. For it is not, for it is the spirit of grace that gives life. Anybody want life working daily? It's only by working with the Holy Spirit. But if you think you're going to, okay, I've got to get my act together, I've got to do everything it says in the Bible today, you learn the word, let it get in your heart, and then let the Holy Spirit distribute it as he will. I used to do counseling a lot. And there would be a certain situation, and I would say something that would help that person. Next time somebody would come along, I would try to give them the same thing I gave before to this guy, and it didn't work. So you've got to let the Holy Ghost distribute his wisdom as he wills. He knows the situations and the circumstance. Come on. So it says here at 2 Corinthians 3, 6 to 7, the ministry of death carved in letters of stone. The only letters carved on the stone were the Ten Commandments, which is the law. The law is regarded as the ministry of death. Isn't that crazy? The Ten Commandments were regarded as the ministry of death because it condemns sin in the flesh, and the wages of sin is death. So what we want to be able to do here, I, I'm going to read this to you. The law kills, but the Spirit gives life. Who wants to experience life? And there was a few of you that did, right? Second Corinthians 3. See, but it's Second Corinthians 3, 6 to 7. And he who, excuse me, and he has qualified us as ministers of the new covenant. Who here was qualified? You were qualified as ministers of this new covenant. Not of the letter. It's not your job to go and make sure everybody's keeping all. 613 laws of the Bible. You can't do it. You can't keep 10 of them, right? It says, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, the Spirit does what? Gives life. Now, if the ministry of death, which was engraved in letters of stone, came with such glory that the Israelites could not gaze at the face of Moses because of its fleeting glory. Are you getting this? That was glorious. Moses brought it was glorious. The problem was you can't do it. So God brought a better way. It says an example of this is how the law ministers death and grace ministers life is seen in the 3,000 people that died when the law was given in Mount Sinai. How many remember that? 
bunch of people, they were already breaking the first law before it was written. And then while 3,000 were saved when the Spirit was given at Mount Sinai. So, excuse me, Mount Zion, thank you. So we've got two mountains. One brought death, 3,000. One brought life, 3,000 were born again. And the difference was the law and the Spirit. Are you going to draw on the Spirit that's in you in Christ Jesus and walk with me and he talks with me? He tells me I am his own. How many know that that person is trying to direct us in this process? And so my job as a minister is to show you that you're equipped. To show you that you have the same power that Jesus had. To show you that you can lay hands on the sick and see him recover. If you walk by that spirit, not the law. Now, should we keep the law? Of course you should. But you never keep the law to make you righteous. Uh, you got to hear this. Should we keep the law? Keep the law, but not to make you righteous. I keep the law because I observe what Jesus said in his Bible. But you'll keep the law effortlessly if you're walking by the Spirit. You'll walk in love naturally when you know the Spirit and know he loves you. Come on. The law is perfect. And when it cannot find perfection in the one trying to keep it, it has no choice but to confer the condemnation of death. How many are glad you're not under the law? How many are glad you're not under that law that's showing you how imperfect you are compared to God daily? How many are glad? Well, I can't imagine what that would have been right. And then we get free from it, and then the churches want to get back under the law. How much do you pray? Now, if somebody asks you that question, why are they asking that? So they can tell you how much they pray. You know, it's like, let's one-up somebody here. So, when someone is under the law, death is constantly being ministered to that person. Today, because of Jesus' finished work, we are under grace, God's ability. As believers, you can choose to be under the law or under grace. Under grace, not only do you live, but you also receive health, Wholeness, come on, Zoe, life of God and eternal life. Life as God lives it is yours in the spirit under grace. Gosh, come on, Jesus. And I want to enjoy all that life has to offer under his grace. Jesus wants you to have life and life more abundantly, John 10, 10. He gave us life in life to just get by. Is that what it says? Life more abundantly. Zoe life, if you looked it up. Life as God lives it and experiences it. He gave it to you and I. So if I'm not experiencing that, I've got to check out what's going on. What did I fill up in my heart? What have I been meditating on that's not allowing the Zoe life to come forth? Have I been watching too much CNN news? Boy, that'll mess you up. Come on. Shouldn't be watching any of that. Come on. The more grace is preached, the more that Zoe life, the more Zoe life of God will quicken within you by the power of the Holy Spirit. So the more grace preached, the more of God's ability that he came and what he did to make you righteous is preached, the more you'll experience that Zoe life. Can you hear me? See, the Holy Spirit is our helper in all things. And he only flows through grace. If you try to get out of grace operating by your ability or saying, I'm keeping the law, I'm doing everything that God said, Holy Spirit says, you got it, man, I'll let you do it. He is the one who brings Jesus into focus. Come on. Use the Holy Spirit's flow with an example. Imagine the Holy Spirit's electricity. I may have been shocked come on, which flows through us. Now imagine the law of rubber, which is a good insulator, but a bad conductor of electricity. When we try to live our lives under the law, the Holy Spirit cannot flow into our lives. We become rubber. Come on. He 
It can only flow when we are living under grace. Under the new covenant, the Holy Spirit is promised to us. Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit when he was in the upper room with the disciples. And he revealed that while he would not be physically present in the days ahead, the Holy Spirit would be given to us as a helper to help guide them and us in our daily life. So we want to be conscious of, not sin conscious, but we want to be conscious of, of how much the Lord loves you. Man, if you're, you know, the focus in a lot of churches I went to before were how much you had to love God. But when I got revelation of how much he loved me, the grace started to flow. Come on. He loves me. Oh, how he loves me. See, when I get that focus, man, things start to happen. That's my consciousness. More conscious of his love. And you can love on others, your spouse, your children. God is love, always greater than your love for him. In Matthew 22, Jesus answered the Pharisee and asked, what's the greatest commandment in the law was? Jesus revealed, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Now, if I don't get a hold of how much he loves me, I'm not going to be able to do that, right? My focus is a result of daily seeking God and his word. Listening to his voice, you will become what you focus on. And if you ha don't like what you've become, you've got to change what you're focusing on. I, if, I'm, if I'm having problems here, if I don't like the fruit that I'm seeing, I need to change focuses. I need to change what I'm feeding into this heart daily. Well, just to watch God be good. To watch God be so good to us. To watch God do holy plops when you're least expecting it. See, when I used to try to figure out how all this was going to go, boy, it got tough out there. How many have ever tried to figure out how God was going to work and do something? You were always wrong because he always did it different, it seemed like. You know, we looked at the story of Martha and Mary. When Jesus came to visit their house, Martha who was focused on serving the Lord well, ended up getting frustrated when Mary chose to sit at Jesus' feet and hear him instead of helping her sister. You ever been in that mode I have? I'm doing all the work. What are you doing? I'm doing everything here, man. Get up here and get helping me. I don't care if Jesus is here. Stop. This work's got to be done. How many have got into works mode, get it done mode, and forgot about the person that the mode was created for. Come on. Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful. And, and this Greek word here, marinamo, and troubled about many things. That's Luke 10, 41. Careful, the word careful in the Greek is marinamo, which means torn apart by distraction or worry. I don't need any more marinamo. I don't need any more torn apart by distraction or worry. Are you with me? We have got a world to reach with the gospel. We've already seen end time signs of the Antichrist system trying to get involved here. I, I can't remember the exact article I read today. I, I saw something that somebody sent me. And they're trying to make it to where... Uh, you know, I told you about that law to protect pedophiles, but they're trying to make it now where if a kid allows you to do it, then it'll be okay and the pedophile won't be arrested. I read that, and I, you know, you want to throw your computer. You can't believe that this is being said. It's actually happened here on this planet, man. But I tell you in the Old Testament, that in a second, that would have, they'd have been stoned to death. Bam, done, over with. But we can't be tore apart. This is the same word that Jesus used in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6, when he encouraged people, do not worry. Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to your stature? Worrying, the word worrying in the Greek is marinamo. Come on, we can say it again. Therefore, take no marinamo, thought saying. Don't say your worried thoughts. You know how you take a thought? By saying it. Take no thought saying. If a thought comes, mm -hmm, 
Come on. D don't say it, man. Don't give life to it. Don't take these fearful thoughts that you've been thinking, and what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> Button it. Zip it. Don't say it. You take that thought by you saying it. How many wish I could have took some words back after they shot him out there? Oh, but no, don't go and say that. Don't do that. So we start changing our thoughts. Come on. Jesus' heart for us is to see us stop worrying and stop toiling. How many remember Matthew 6, the lilies of the field? Anybody remember those? I, I want you to see this because we know that it says Solomon in all of his glory, one of the richest man on earth, was not arrayed like one of these. But you know how the lilies got there? It said, the lilies neither toiled or spun. They got beautiful but by what they didn't do. See what I was trying to do to make to happen. They got beautiful by what they didn't do. They didn't toil or spin, and yet Solomon all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If you want to start looking more beautiful, stop toiling. Come on now. Let the worries go. Let the rest go. Now, to live under grace is to believe that God is always supplying you with every good thing. Right now, let's just, let's just look at that. Is God supplying us with every good thing, saints? Is there anything we lack? Is there anything we don't have? I, I mean, you got to understand, he created a seed... He created seed-bearing plants, and he just put them on the ground. Do you know God's original design was that man wouldn't have to do anything? The work he did was for enjoyment until the weeds came along, until he ate from the tree of knowledge. God's job is that you would enjoy life and enjoy it abundantly. So we've got the new tree of life, Jesus. We need to be coming and eating from him and allowing his grace to supply your needs. Well, sometimes it gets tight, it gets tough. I've been in those places. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I didn't know if there was going to be chains on the front doors of these buildings at time. Didn't know how we were going to pay for stuff at time. But I had to get in that place where, God, you always meet my needs according to your riches and glory. And guess what happened? God always met our needs. But I had to not let the toiling and the spinning start. Come on now. God can be your caretaker or he can be your undertaker cast your cares worries burdens on him tomorrow or today come on it, you know i, I want you to see as i'm going to come down here a little bit just for time's sake but I, I want you to see this we've got to overcome every distraction and depressive thought and look unto jesus depend on his grace alone how many believe that the Holy Spirit is a person? The third part of the God, he was sent down on earth, Jesus left, and he's here with us now. He's got every bit of grace, every provision we would ever need. Will we allow him to impartner us, if you haven't already, and you get to rest? It's like you've got somebody taking care of you. I've gone to places, seen people that have ran governments before. I sat with a few of the parliament of Kenyan government. And when you're sitting with these guys, there's just no worries, no problems. They don't worry if they get to say something. He says, well, let me confer that question to my partner here. I, I mean, these guys are rested, relaxed. They've seen countries be overtaken. They've seen finances go up and down because they've cast their cares on the Lord. Are you with me? Cursed is everyone that counteth not all things which are written in the book of the law. How many want to be cursed? Then we can't continueth. Say continueth. <laughs> we're not to be continueth in all the works of the law. All the book of the law says we can't or we're going to be cursed. That's how it happened. But Paul was telling the people that the reason they were seeing curses in their lives was they had gone back under the law, which demanded perfection and ministered death. To them because they could not fulfill all of it see the law is set up to where if you don't fulfill all somebody say the word all 600 
13 laws. Most of the time, I couldn't fulfill just the Ten Commandments. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So unless you're perfect, you aren't going to make it under the law. And of course, it demanded perfection. It ministered death to them because they could not fulfill it. The law was given at Mount Sinai. The Jewish people agreed to it and then in an analogy, being married to the law. The Jewish culture, the only way a married woman could break free from her husband is through death. So Jesus provided a way through the cross by dying for, the righteous, for us righteously at the cross. Today we are no longer married to the law. How many have had a few spouses that you thought you were married? Don't, don't answer that. I'm, I'm, come on. To break free from that husband was death. So Jesus provided a way through dying on the cross. Come on. To righteously at the cross. Today we no longer are married to the law, but we are married to the resurrected Jesus and his grace. How many are glad for that? Come on. Now, I want fruit of righteousness. I want to be Jesus conscious and not sin conscious. How many are ready to go there? You can all just stand up with me. I just want to pray with you a minute and then we'll receive our communion. But this is important now. Say, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. And you took the law to give me grace. You fulfilled the law so I could have your grace. I can't do everything perfect, but you did. So I'm trusting in you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the life of your spirit that you sent to me. Say, thank you for your spirit, Lord. Come on. Say, I want to let him be my best friend. Come on. I want you to be my best friend, Holy Spirit. Thank you for empowering me with your grace today. Thank you for empowering me with your life today, Holy Spirit. Thank you that you are my focus so I don't need to be distracted anymore. Help me know when things start distracting me and I need to get my focus back on you. Jesus, I thank you for that today. I thank you through these times ahead of us, God, that my focus will be you and you will show me everything I need to know.